Let's move to the Western Cape now, where the community of Lang and Cape Town is rebuilding following a devastating fire which ravaged their homes. Almost 300 homes were burnt to the ground, leaving about 800 people homeless. The cause of the fire is still unknown. Our reporter, Ronald Masinda, is in the area and joins us now for this conversation. Ronald, various NGOs and community leaders have provided donations to support the displaced residents, but some political leaders as well are blaming government. How so? Not only political leaders, but uh, residents here from Joslovo informal settlement, they say that they are tired of being led by a reactionary government, a government that only reacts following disasters such as the one that took place here over the weekend. And uh, they say that uh, this could have been avoided, perhaps, if people had uh, adequate housing, if people were not living in such appalling conditions as we are seeing in the background. Now, many of the people that we are seeing in the background don't even know whether or not they will have a roof over their heads tonight. Many of them have to return back to work tomorrow as well as send their children to school. I'm going to bring in Sister Tamara because well, that was uh, one of the residents, uh, Sister Tamara, saying that she lost uh, all her furniture in the house, including her children's uh, school books and, and uniform. And she says that a lot of the residents we are seeing here, they normally sit around the fire and don't have a place to live. I'm going to bring in the ANC's uh, Polani Sotashe closer to perhaps maybe just uh, answer a few of our questions. Uh, Puti, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. I mean, this is a historic issue. Yeah. No, look, um, I think uh, we can't be applying the same strategy and then we don't get the results. The, um, the city of Cape Town has to come with a deliberate program that seeks to address the problems of the informal settlements in general. Because this is not a first fire, it's not a last fire. Um, these communities are always confronted with this kind of a situation. So the issue of informal settlement upgrade must be key, must be at the top of the priorities of the city of Cape Town. Because what I've picked up here, uh, not only this area, in all the informal settlements, the problem is access roads. If we had access roads in this informal settlement, we could have minimized the impact. But because there are no access roads, um, we need to de-densify the area so that we can be able to have free movement for, for fire, fire vehicles. So, so that's a matter that I'm going to raise it very sharply with the, with the new mayor of Cape Town. He has made a promise that uh, it's going to be business unusual. So that business unusual must be allocating more resources for the informal settlements across the city of Cape Town because we are going to experience the same problems even in other areas. We've seen uh, quite a number of political leaders come here to Langa to, you know, lend their support. I mean, is this enough? Is this enough just to show face because people need uh, solutions? Well, um, one of the things that I think political leaders must do is not to politicize um, the hardships of our people. We need to work together to make sure that we assist people. I must say I was impressed when I arrived here. A uh, PAC arrived. I'm told that the EFF was here yesterday. What I've said to those leaders is that, look, we, we need to hold hands together to make sure that um, uh, we speak with one voice because this is not a kind of a, a, a political contestation, but we must come here to help people. One, the other thing that we need to make sure that it does happen, it's a coordination between the three spheres of government. We, we are tired of the... No, I mean, uh, municipality blaming province, province blaming national. All three spheres of government must, make, must work together to, to, uh, I mean, to direct resources to incidents like this. Uh, I'm happy that the deputy minister is going to be here tomorrow, uh, Deputy Minister Chwete. Uh, I've spoken to her when I arrived here. She committed that she's going to be here today, I mean tomorrow. 
I have spoken to the MMC for Human Settlement, Malusi Boi. He has committed that uh, he's working on something too. Because one of the challenges that people have here, they don't have material. The city of Cape Town is saying that they don't have money to buy the material for people to rebuild their houses. There must be something to help people because some of the people here, they don't know where they are going to get the material. So that is where I'm saying that issue of coordination between the three spheres of government is of importance. All right. Mr. Sutasha, thank you very much indeed for your time. And on the issue of faith of material, a lot of people have complained that they don't have material to rebuild their homes. We had had a chat with the deputy mayor of uh, the city of Cape Town, Eddie Andrews, and he said that uh, the city will first assess as to how they can, you know, look at the damages and sort of assess uh, what people need uh, before uh, taking a decision in order to try and assist people. But as uh, Mr. Sutashi rightly also mentioned, that the deputy minister of human settlements, uh, Pam Chatter, will also be here tomorrow. Well, I'm sure we're going to get, as, uh, as the story develops, more information regarding that. I think what's more disheartening is to see how even some of the, the residents are saying that they don't even know where they're going to sleep uh, this evening. Some